All right, on the 740s here, first thing that you need to do is you actually need to bypass your kill switch. You're actually going to put a jumper in there. Okay, after that is completed, then you're going to actually need to heat the machine up to operating temperatures, and then you need to go and do your lock rotors. All right, this is what we're using when we lock our rotors together. You can use something similar, a chain, uh, uh, anything that's got safety device on it where it's not going to fall off or, or get tangled up. All right, now that we got our safety strap on there to do the lock rotors on there, we're going to start the engine, ease it around till it's taut. All right, our next step is we're going to connect our gauges to our test ports. We're going to start with the charge gauge. It's going to be a 1,000 PSI gauge, and it's actually going to go over the the charge pump test port which is actually in the back of the machine. I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, the other two are going to be 6,000 PSI gauges. You're going to hook one up on the PUR on the right hand for the right hand rotor motor and the ML for the left hand. Both of them are going to be 6,000 PSI gauges and they're going to be hooked on the, the main pump. Alright, we're on the back side of the machine this is where you hook your charge pressure gauge up at, right there on the back side of the pump underneath the cooler. All right, now we're going to hook up our gauges for our, our left hand and our right hand rotor motor. Which one is that, Pat? That's your left this rotor is, motor. It's your left rotor motor. It goes on the bottom, the bottom gauge port on the unloader on the cooler side. Okay, now we're going to hook up the right rotor motor, and it is directly above where you hook the left one at on the gauge port on the top on the unloader on the cooler side. All right, is what we're doing now is we're removing the cap on the high side of the unloader. Now, note that on your pump, it comes with 4,000 psi reliefs on there. You can adjust your rotor speeds on it, but you can't adjust your pumps. You just have to change out the reliefs if there's something bad on that as far as that goes. And, and these pressures actually help tell us what's good and what's bad. That's why we recommend them. Alright, now when we was talking about setting your rotor speed, you can actually adjust your rotor speed on your pumps. Each of them has the same one right here, but it's supposed to be set at 133. If, if you change that, it's actually going to rob from your hydraulics on the end. Okay, on setting the, the rotor speed on your pump, in order to turn it up, you actually have to go back it out, which would actually be to the left, be counterclockwise. Alright, when we're setting the, the unloader on the high side here, you'll actually break the jam nut loose, hold it with your wrench, and then you'll actually turn it in to increase pressure, you'll turn it out to decrease pressure, the pressure it's supposed to be set at is 2750 to 2800 PSI. All right, last but not least on the gauges, you'll actually need one more gauge. It's a 6000 PSI. You'll actually hook it on the unloader right here at the top next to where you set your high side unloader pressure. And then that one will actually tell you when your unloader kicks in. Okay, is what we're about to demonstrate for you is we're about to demonstrate the part where what your gauges should look like when your pressures are set correctly. Right here is your charge pressure gauge. It's a 1,000 PSI gauge. Your, your pressure should be set from 135 to 140 PSI. Here's your left hand rotor motor. Here's your right hand rotor motor. And then here's your unloader on the high side. Now, is what you're going to be looking for is when your rotor motors make it up to 2750 to 2800 PSI, your unloader actually kicks in. And all this will be done at full throttle. Three, go.
we're about to show you what the pressure is supposed to be and look like and where the gauge port is for the unloader on the low side. It's actually located on your, your pitch and steering manifold. And it is right here underneath your seat on the right hand side if you're sitting on the machine. All right, this is where you set your unloader on the low side. It actually takes a 13 millimeter wrench in your Allen <coughs> wrench. And then uh, when you do that, it'll be, you'll loosen off the jam nut. You'll actually screw it in to increase pressure, screw it out to decrease pressure. The gauge should read 145 to 150 PSI. Do not go over 150 PSI because then you're going to rob from your engine. <coughs> All right, when, when we're setting this, you still have to have your rotors locked. It takes a thousand PSI gauge on this. And if you do not lock your rotors and your rotor motors are free spinning, it will destroy your gauge. Alright, that was the proper reading, what you should have on your low side for your unloader. Alright, on top of your manifold is your GP1 gauge. That's the one we use to actually set our steering and pitch pressure. It should be at 650 to 700 PSI, and I'll show you where the actual settings are. Okay, now we're at the back of the machine. This is where you set your steering and your pitch pressure it is right here next to your actuators on your manifold you see Pat's pointing at it right there in will increase pressure out will decrease pressure just like most of the other ones